Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, uh, recently I built this little CW transceiver, low power transceiver, called the Cricket 40 from the Four States QRP group. And uh, a couple of things I want to do today. First off, I want to address uh, one mystery in the schematic. We're looking here at the schematic. And uh, over here by the local oscillator, there's two diodes right there. And uh, uh, what was what was confusing me on the um, initial build when I looked at the schematic was what are they doing? Because they're reverse biased um, against the power rail here at the gate of Q2. And uh, there were uh, comments. Um, some people said it was reverse power supply protection, which doesn't really make sense. Um, if you're going to do that, you're going to do it. Um, you're going to do it up here uh, where the uh, battery connector is. And there's probably going to be a fuse in line here, uh, so that if the uh, power was, or a fuse ahead of it actually, up here, so that if the uh, power was reversed, the diode would blow the fuse and protect the circuit. Um, if, if these mystery diodes over here were for power supply protection, uh, reverse power supply protection, where are they? There they are. Nope, wrong way. Okay. Um, if these two diodes here were for reverse power supply protection, that wouldn't make sense because if the battery was hooked up backwards, the diodes would blow and then the rest of the circuit would blow. Um, so another one uh, commented uh, about uh, reverse bias diodes uh, for gate protection and he was, uh, he was spot on. Um, I thought perhaps that they were to protect against high levels of RF coming in from the antenna from broadcast stations. Um, no, I was kind of in the right direction, but I was wrong. I emailed uh, David um, NM0S, the designer of this circuit, and he responded. Um, and he says here that diodes D2 and D3 clamp the drive waveform at the gate of Q2 to protect the gate of Q2 from damage in the event of voltage transients coming from the oscillator. And it also permits the oscillator to operate at a higher drive level. So what these are doing is they're making sure that um, higher voltage RF transients coming from the oscillator don't damage the gate of Q2 right there. So that's what those are for. Uh, so there we go. That answers that. Um, now, what am I doing today? Well, I want to measure the power output of the Cricut. Um, I, it's, it's rated at uh, it's supposed to be 750 milliwatts, and I'd like to find out precisely how much power it's putting out. Uh, the other thing I'm curious about is uh, leakage from the oscillator. This is a direct conversion receiver. Um, so the way that those operate, the oscillator runs at the same frequency that you're uh, receiving at. And then and signals coming in from the antenna uh, will then mix with that frequency in the mixer. And what comes out is the sum and difference of the two frequencies. So this choke will choke off the RF components leaving just the sum and the difference. Now, if you had a uh, the oscillators at 70, 30 uh, kilohertz, and you had a signal at uh, uh, 70, 31 kilohertz, one kilohertz up uh, coming in, then what would be getting past this choke would be that one kilohertz signal. And that's how a direct conversion receiver works. Uh, the downside to direct conversion receivers, however, is that some of this local oscillator energy will leak through the mixer and go back out the antenna. And since it's at the same frequency you're receiving at, the low-pass filter will pass it, and you'll get some oscillator leakage. In testing, uh, when I built the kit with James, uh, who's parked about uh, 70, 80 yards away, uh, he could hear the oscillator uh, 10 over 9. Um, so I'm curious to see how much it's leaking. So what we're going to do today is we're going to measure the Cricut. So this is going to be my test setup. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, Cricut and I'm going to feed it into a dummy load, and then I'm going to use an oscilloscope to measure the voltage across the dummy load. And uh, once I have the voltage uh, and a known resistance, I'm also going to have to measure my dummy load, by the way, at the frequency that I'm going to be operating at, 70, 30 kilohertz, to get a precise measurement of its resistance. 
So what I'll have is I'll have a known resistance and I'll have a known voltage and then I'll be able to use Ohm's law to calculate the power. Now Ohm's law has several formulas. Um, if you have any two of these four variables, okay, P uh, is power, um, I is current in amps, R is resistance in ohms, and V is voltage in volts. Oh, P is in watts, by the way. If you have any two of these, so I will have uh, voltage and I will have resistance, and I should be able to calculate power using this formula here. Voltage squared divided by resistance is going to give us our power. The other way that I could do it, um, if I have voltage and resistance, is I could first calculate the current over here using this formula, voltage divided by resistance, and then once I have the current, I could use uh, voltage times current to get power. So with two values, you can calculate the other two, and Ohm's law works this way for all these. If you have voltage and power, you can calculate resistance, um, voltage squared over power. You see there's a mathematical relationship here. Uh, this graphic, by the way, if you can't remember these formulas, is uh, super handy. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I put it in my smartphone, so I've always got it handy as a memory re reference. Um, pretty useful. So that's the test setup. Um, first things first, I need to measure my dummy load. So this is my test setup for measuring the uh, dummy load. I have my MFJ dry dummy load, and I've hooked my mini VNA up to it to scan it and measure its resistance. Now, many people might not have something like a VNA, but if you have an antenna analyzer, uh, most all antenna analyzers will give you an indication of impedance with what they're hooked up to. So you could use an antenna analyzer to measure your dummy load and get a precise resistance at a precise frequency. So when I scanned the dummy load, uh, this is what I found at 7.03 megahertz, an SWR of 1.13 to 1, and a Z, an impedance of 56.4 ohms. So now I know that my dummy load is precisely 56.4 ohms at frequency, and I have my R value. Next, I had to hook up the oscilloscope and measure the voltage. So here I am set up to measure with the oscilloscope. Now I'm dealing with very low power levels here, um, less than a watt. So I decided to just use a BNCT and connect the dummy load right there at the input of the scope and the output of the cricket directly to the other side of the T. Now the scope's input impedance is greater than one mega ohm. So all the power is really going to be going into the dummy load at only 56.4 ohms. Uh, if you have two resistors in parallel like that and one is very much lower than the other, well, electricity always chooses the path of least resistance. So I'm not going to hurt the scope at all by doing it this way. If I was measuring a radio with much higher power, say 100 watts, I might make a tap that I could put at the dummy load, maybe a couple of uh, uh, SO239s back to back and with wires between them so I could clip the scope's probes onto it and use the times 10 probe on the scope to get even higher input impedance. But at, at less than a watt, I'm not going to damage the scope at all. So I turned on the cricket, and right away I see a signal. Now that's the oscillator leakage that's coming through. So I went ahead and uh, recorded that voltage level here. And, and as you can see from this uh, still, we were at 308 millivolts peak to peak. It's over there on the right, just below that uh, mean of four millivolts. So that's our peak to peak voltage of the oscillator signal that's leaking through. So I'll record that. And then I went ahead and transmitted, uh, and I had to and bring the scope's sensitivity down, obviously, uh, because we're going to be putting a little bit more power in. And I measured that at 17 volts, 17 volts peak to peak for transmit. So now I have my two voltage um, measurements, and I can go and I can calculate the power. Well, now that I've made my measurements, I'm ready to calculate the power coming out of the cricket. So we know that our resistance is 56.4 ohms. Now, the voltage that I measured uh, when I was transmitting was 17 volts peak to peak. Uh, I can't really use that to calculate power. And the reason for that, if we, if we look at the scope again here, um, what we're seeing coming out of the cricket is a sine wave. Now, remember that we're looking at voltage over time. 
right? So moving from the left to the right across the display, we're looking at time. So although we might see a certain voltage at a peak that only exists for a microsecond or two, because the voltage then swings down to zero, goes negative, comes back up to zero, and, and so on. So we can't really use peak-to-peak -peak values to calculate power dissipation across the device. We're only going to see uh, the power being applied to the device at a specific point in time. What we need to do is we need to average that power out um, from the peak values down to an average value. Uh, and that will give us a usable working power measurement. So the way that we do that is we take the peak-to-peak -peak voltage and we multiply it by 0.3535. So if I take 17 times 0.3535, I get 6.0095 volts. All right, And we'll just round that up to 6. Um, I, I'm not too worried about that absolute decimal precision here. We're going to get very close um, to what we're actually seeing. So we'll just put 6 in there. Uh, so now that I've got my RMS, or average um, voltage, uh, I can calculate the power. So for power, we take voltage squared divided by resistance, right? So we'll take 6 times 6. So 6 squared is 36 divided by 56.4. And the power that the cricket was pushing into that dummy load is 638 milliwatts. I'm only going to go with three decimal points precision here, um, which is probably going to drive some of the math nerds out there nuts, but that's what I'm going to do. So 0 0.0638 is our transmit power out. 0 0.638. So 638 milliwatts. Uh, now the, the cricket's rated at putting out 750 milliwatts. Uh, that would be under an ideal scenario with a perfect, uh, perfectly matched load. Our load uh, here, that MFJ dummy load, is off just a little bit. It's 56.4 ohms. That's why there was just a little bit of SWR um, when I measured it with the VNA. And that little bit of reflected power is probably somewhat canceling some of the forward power. So that's why I'm seeing 638 milliwatts instead of 750. So that's still pretty good. That's more than half a watt. Uh, it's a, that's, that's a good little kit. Uh, now, the other thing I was curious about was the oscillator leakage, and we did measure that, remember? Um, we measured that uh, voltage, that peak-to-peak -peak voltage, at uh, 0 0.308, 308 millivolts. But again, we can't work with the peak value. We need to work with the average. So let's take our calculator and let's figure out what 0.308 times 0.3535 is uh, so 108 well that's an 8 so I'll round this up to a 9 so we'll put uh, 0.109 so that's our uh, voltage now let's calculate power remember we can calculate the missing two values if we have two values. So I can calculate current, and then once I've calculated current, I can then calculate the power. So we want to calculate current. Voltage divided by resistance is the formula that we'll use. So we'll take 0 0.109 divided by 56.4 gives us a current of uh, 1.9 milliamps. So I guess I'll round that up to 2 milliamps. So our current is 0 0.002. All right, so that's our current. Well, now that I've got current, I can calculate power using this formula, V times I, voltage times current. So back to the calculator. We'll take our current value times uh, 0.109 and we get 0.2 milliwatts of uh, oscillator leakage. <laughs> 0.0002. So there we go. That is our power, uh, the amount of power that's leaking out. Now, 0.2 milliwatts is not a lot of power, 
But once you put that on an antenna, it does radiate, and somebody close by, probably within about a mile, might be able to pick up that oscillator leakage from your uh, your direct conversion receiver. Maybe not a mile, <laughs> but definitely a few hundred yards. So anyway, there we go. Um, I now know exactly how much power my Cricket's putting out, and uh, I know how much the oscillator's leaking. And that's how you do it. I hope you found that interesting, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.